everybody. It's, uh, it's me. Um, I wanted to do this really, well, in my opinion, it's really awesome, um, thing that a lot of the people in my subscription feed are, have been doing. It's the YouTube Pagan Challenge. Apparently, it um, was started by the Facebook group uh, YT Pagan, Pagans, sorry. Uh, and um, they're going to do a different question every week, which I think is pretty cool and can help out those who are usually the contently challenged. Contently is not a word. Oh, I'm making up words again. Welcome to the video! <laughs> Um, so it's week one and the question for week one is how did you find your path? And the videos that I have watched, um, it is, some people started so young, so, so young, so very young. And it's awesome that they could start that young. Um, that they were able to start that young. Um, I know I saw a couple today where early teens, they were just out and proud and no broom closet. And I'm like, that must be nice. <laughs> I mean, great for them, cookies for them. And I really, really wish I would have had the same type of situation. But that wasn't, that's not my deal, apparently. Um... I, and I get, I, and I agree with a lot of people that you're on your path without even realizing it. You're already walking down your path before you even realize it because I saw this and I, and I thought about it and I sat there and I thought about it and I, I went down, I started, you know, right down the first thing that I actually remember doing as an 18 year old. And I went, wait a minute, no, that's not right. It started younger than that. I just wasn't aware that's what was going on. Um, stuff like church didn't feel right. Church never felt right. I hate a church. <laughs> I hate a church. Still do. Still do. Um, but as a young kid, it was just a constant. But yeah, but, and they'd be like, no, no, no. That's what the Bible says and that's it. I wasn't allowed to say anything else besides that. Oh, <clears throat> Southern Baptist, by the way. Just so we're clear to clear, clear on that. And my parents were, my mother and my father, never were really, when they were together, they split when I was 12, they would force my sister and myself to go to church on Sundays. And somebody else would come pick them up, but they wouldn't go. My dad, to this day, still, that I'm aware of, still doesn't go every Sunday. Um... My mom actually started going to church right around the time I was my late teens, late teens, around 20, she started going to church. She's heavy into church now, heavy into the church. Um... But it was, it seems so weird now because before, there, I, I didn't grow up in an overly religious household where it's, you know, you'll, like some people, right, it's like you, you learn your Bible verses, you'll never speak against God. It just, there was a lack of religion in my house, kind of, but you didn't, there's certain things you didn't do. Um, you know, just the basic, you know, don't. Don't take God's name in vain. Don't take Jesus' name in vain. That kind of, just, you know, the basic stuff. 
Um, but I thought about it, getting back, back to where I was. Um, I can remember, I, as far back as I can remember, which if any of y'all have been around for a while, you know my memory isn't exactly that great. But when I can remember elementary school, I've always drawn stars on stuff for good luck. And then I just distinctly remember, because it was so awkward, especially where I grew up, everybody was, everybody was, everybody went to church on Sunday. All the kids I went to school with went to church on Sunday. And they all seem to be happy with going to church on Sunday. They were ready to worship, and I wasn't. I can distinctly remember, you know, going, and they used to tell me, or they used to tell us, all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart, and he'll come in and it'll fill you. I can't tell you the number of times that I asked, and nothing happened. And it's so confusing, not understanding. Okay, they said all that I had to do was this, and I did, and nothing happened. That's confusing for a 10, 11 year old. That was just so, so strange. And it's still strange to me to this day that why you would tell a kid that. Well, I, I, well, I guess with the expectation of, you know, I'm, okay, I'm not even going to get into that argument. I can see in my head where, the, where I'm about to go with my argument, and I'm not going to go there. <laughs> not going there. Not today. So, <clears throat> so there was little instances. Um, there was one time when I went down to my grandparents' house in Fort Lauderdale for the summer. I spent a good chunk of my summer vacation down there. My grandmother had this had a book. And it had a palmistry section. I spent a good chunk of my summer copying it down. Even draw, I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. I still have it. Um, and then when I went back to school, um, when school started up again, when I came back up here and the school started again, um, I did it for a couple kids on the bus or whatever. I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't dare do it, you know, too much and things like that. Um, but there was always just this little stuff. And then, by the time I was 18, and after I had graduated high school, I was ready to start exploring other options. I was like, there's, there's got to be something. Um, I looked at Buddhism. I looked at... Oh God! I looked at I looked at what I could because this is nine. This was 1996, and internet was still a baby. I did not have access to the internet at that point in time. Um, where I was staying, didn't even have a computer. Mm -mm. I don't think I even touched a computer my senior year of high school. Mm -mm, I didn't. It just wasn't. This wasn't a big thing. Um, yes, I knew how to operate one, but the high school I went to was very small and largely backwards. <laughs> so, I was in a bookstore one day. And it came across Raymond Buckland's book. Uh, what's it? The complete book of witchcraft, whatever it's the it's the blue one, it has like the root, the red pentagram, pentagram or pentagram on the front, and then I also it intrigued me. I, I of course I did it. I flipped around, turned around, look at the back, read the back, and then kind of flipped through it real quick. I'm like, oh okay, and then I also happened to get. 
Silver Raven Wolves to ride a broomstick. Which, and let me tell you what, I was lucky I even found those where I was, because, mm -mm. mm -mm. So, understandably, when I, when I brought them home, they were hidden. They were so hidden. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell y'all right now, I hated Raymond Buckland's book. I know people are going to crucify me for it. I hated that book. I did not like it at all. It was just... I don't, I don't know if because it, it was because everything was in terms of you're with a coven already and you're st kind of supposed to be starting from that point, which I was not. I, just something about that book, just you know, and it's one of the very few witchy books I've gotten rid of. I got rid of that book. I still have the Silver Raven Wolf book because I highlighted the crap out of it at the time because it was you know. That one was easier for me to relate to, so that one, I can't get rid of that. It's got like all kinds of highlighter and stuff in it, so I couldn't give that one away. Um, and that I use it anymore, and I don't because that book kind of like introduces you to Wiccan stuff, and I'm not Wiccan. I may have started out that way. I'm sorry, I've got something in my eye all of a sudden. I may kind of started leaning towards that way when I first started, but. Um, I know I'm not now. Um, nothing against the people that enjoyed the book. Cookies for you. Still Wiccan. Cookies for you. Um, it's, it just wasn't for me. Um, <clears throat> and of course, back then it was, you know, it, I was, I made the, that, that, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this and I hope no one takes this in a derogative way. The baby witch mistake of everything's got to be according to the book. Oh God, it was in the book. It has to be exactly like this, like this, like this. A, B, and C have to all line up perfectly or it's all going to be wrong. It, it, I, I personally did never got the impression there was room for error. There was no room for trial and error. That's the impression I got. I'm just saying, that's the impression I got. Um... But then, you know, it's progressed from there. That was, I was, that was when I was 18. That was about 20 years ago. So, um, not that I've been steadily practicing since then because I haven't. Um, there was a point in time where I stopped. Um, for a good five, six years, I just, I didn't do anything because he, my significant other at the time, didn't agree with it. And I was young and stupid. I went, oh, okay, all right, okay. Um, and that's one of the big, my biggest regrets in life. It really is. Because I didn't ever in a million years thought I would say something or do something like that. But the whole situation I was in at the time, I was so beat down and just so, that I went along with it. And then I picked, I picked it up again. Um, I picked it up slowly. Oh, so slowly. Because I was, I don't know, I was afraid. But I'm not at that point anymore. <laughs> Thank goodness. Not at that point anymore. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's how I, I, I kind of got myself on the path or realized I was on the path kind of thing um, so this was fun if you if you guys haven't seen any other videos yet please go check them out because there's some really 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 awesome ones out there um, and if you feel like trying it please do because it, it's pretty cool to sit there and you know think about it and then talk about it and get it out there um, so I'll see you guys next time bye